California's decision to end pursuit of its advanced clean fleets waiver could actually expedite clean trucking. You're watching CCJ's 1044, a weekly webisode that brings you the latest trucking industry news and updates from the editors of CCJ. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you'll never miss an installment of 1044. Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Jason Cannon and my co-host on the other side as always is Matt Colt. California this month withdrew its waiver request from the EPA to implement its Advanced Clean Fleets Rule, which would have effectively mandated electric trucks in the state. This isn't quite the death nail for electric trucks that it might sound like, and it could in fact be a good thing for cleaner trucking. Ending pursuit of ACF didn't affect California's Advanced Clean Truck Rule, which mandates sales of zero emission trucks versus the number of diesels. It also doesn't touch CARB's Omnibus Rule, which is kind of like a turbocharged GHG Phase 3, a federal guideline that itself is untouched. While the shelving of ACF likely changes, if not slows, adoption of electric trucks, it won't end it. Yeah, it'll change the, the future of the electric truck, I think. Um, obviously, we still have ACT, we still have GHG Phase 3 from the EPA, so you still have the emission requirements, which, as you know, under ACT, essentially mandates, well, battery electric is the only truck that would qualify. So as far as California goes, and again with GHG phase three, I think we all have to assume there's still going to be a future for battery electric, right? And of course, all the money the OEMs have pumped into it. But I do think it will it'll change, as you say. I think it will slow down a little bit. I think that the, the rush for the infrastructure, to the extent there is a, a rush going on right now in the infrastructure space, I think that'll slow as well. But I do think there will, there will be a continued push and demand toward battery electric, even without ACF. President Donald Trump mentioned throughout his campaign plans to roll back strict emissions requirements. And at his inauguration address Monday, again referenced ending EV subsidies and his plans to drill baby drill. Jim says those could be good things for other means of lower emissions trucking, namely renewable and biodiesel and natural gas. I would never, ever speak for the OEMs, but obviously there are some OEMs that are still developing and have developed those other technologies. Uh, Cummins obviously is, is pursuing other technologies. And then there are aftermarket technologies out there as well on bio and, and renewable. So I do think there's an opportunity for both of those in California and elsewhere. And I think what's going to be real interesting is, you know, with, with California withdrawing the ACF waiver and what incoming President Trump has indicated he intends to do, you know, if he reopens greenhouse gas phase three in the timelines, if they somehow rescind ACT, I do think all three of those things combined would be a great opportunity for biodiesel and renewable, which as you know, both of those have a more beneficial life cycle carbon footprint than does battery electric. So those would all be good things. I've talked to some, some agricultural producers the other day, and you know their their percentage of feedstock versus what's used for bio and renewable, it, it's the the percentage that's used for bio is much greater than I believed. And so, when people say you can't use you know the agricultural products for fuel because it it, it takes away from feedstock and there's not enough of that, I, I just don't believe there's any truth to that. So I think the supply for bio and renewable is sufficient. And I think when you start to see more parity on credits and incentives, and you take away this singular focused mandate on battery electric, I think that those other technologies and alternatives will get a boost without a doubt. You don't have the huge infrastructure costs with those other technologies that you have a battery electric. CARB had been waiting for the ACF waiver for over a year, but Jim says dropping the matter entirely is likely no big deal in Chucking's ongoing quest to clean up its carbon footprint. I don't think it's that big of a deal. Um, as, I, as we've talked about already, there are other solutions out there that are cleaner than battery electric. Um, again, talking about life cycle, not just the tailpipe, of course. And so the industry has been pushing hard for decades for cleaner trucks. And, and you know the progress is, is significant. And there are other technologies really that have been developed and are in the pipeline. And if, if you start to see some more parity on things like the tax credits for biodiesel, if you start to see parity or some semblance of parity on subsidies for those technologies, as, as opposed to just entirely on battery electric, I think you'll see, if not the same pace, a quicker pace 
to get to cleaner trucks than they than we were going to see under this mandated transition to battery electric trucks that CARB was was pursuing. And by the way, I mean, right, so they've they've rescinded or, or withdrawn their waiver on ACF, but there are, they certainly have other mechanisms by which they can continue to to put the pressure on the industry to get the 100% better electric. So I, I don't by any means think that because ACF waiver was withdrawn that California has, quote, given up the fight on that angle. I don't think that's true at all. As much as ACF was derided by the transportation industry at large, Jim says there's no celebrating the decision to remove it. Stakeholders do appreciate the flexibility and the removal of what was a fast-track adoption for expensive technologies. But it seemingly also gives the OEMs more control over a development cycle and a timeline that better aligns with technology maturation. It's definitely a, um, a good sign, and, and it, it allows the fleets um, to take a breath. But to mention the OEMs, I mean, they still have a large role in this. It'll be interesting to see what they do in light of the withdrawal of, of the ACF waiver. You know, you saw that Daimler quit selling product or diesel product in Oregon. Now they've turned it back on due to their credit issue. But the OEM is still going to have a pretty large role in this on how they're going to spend their, their R&D money and what, what products they're going to pursue. But the short story is the members of the CFC and the folks in their associations, they, they find this as a positive move. It gives them a little bit of breathing room. And then working in conjunction with the incoming administration, hopefully get some relief on those other two regulations that I talked about, GHG3 and uh, ACT. That's it for this week's 1044. You can read more on ccjdigital.com. While you're there, sign up for our newsletter and stay up to date on the latest in trucking industry news and trends. If you have any questions or feedback, please let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you can catch us again next week.